Glory to God. Welcome to Faith Talk, a miracle moment with Bishop Oalafe. You are welcome. Good to see you, family. Yes, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. There is a miracle with your name on it. Glory to God. I thank you for joining me in this special time. I want you to share this uh, broadcast. Love it. Share it. Bring more people on. I'm trying to get you to share it. I'm trying to share it on my other page. So share it and bring more people on. Let me know where you're watching from, where you're joining from. There is a miracle for you today. God has a miracle plan for your life. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. God has a miracle plan for your life. Great things are going to happen today. I have a word from God. I have a word for you right where you are. God has been thinking about you. God has you on his mind. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, this is the day the Lord has made. Happy new month to you, family. Happy new month to you. God will do great things in the name of Jesus. As you come in, I want you to love this video. I want you to share it. I want you to bring more people on. God is up to something. Something great is about to happen for you right where you are right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So get ready, get ready for an encounter of a lifetime. I'm sharing this on my other pages and I want you to do the same. I want you to bring more people on. Let me know where you're watching from. As I see you, I'll be able to uh, welcome you and recognize you in a minute. So let's do that. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I see you. I see. I see you there. I see my wife. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Let me know where you're watching from. I have a word from God for you right where you are amen if i see you if i see your if i see you i will recognize you and welcome you but i want you to know that god is thinking about you this will be a great month for you this will be a great month for your family this will be a month of big time change for you yeah god is going to change things in your favor yes your life would never be the same again. Hello, my wife. God bless you. I see you. Maybe I should put this on my side so I can see you. I see my wife. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of this uh, broadcast, Miracle Moment, Faith Talk. I have a word from God, and I have a miracle with your name on it. God is going to speak to you. God's going to touch you. God's going to heal you. God's going to empower you. Yes, there is something that God has prepared for you. Whatever your desires are, I want you to open up your heart and get ready for a visitation. Today is a day of visitation. God will visit your life. God will visit you where you are and he will perform his good plans concerning you. So as you are joining, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where you're joining from. Share this broadcast love it bring more people on there is a mandate there is a word from god this is faith talk and miracle moment what does that mean we're going to begin to talk faith as we talk the word of god as we look into the word of god faith is going to enter into your heart and when faith comes everything is possible yeah because if you have faith nothing shall be impossible if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed Nothing shall be impossible to you. So faith is going to come into your heart and the miracles are going to happen for you right where you are. So I want you to get ready for a miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray right now and we're going to get into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this miracle moment. I thank you for this person watching me right now. I thank you for the life of this person, and I thank you for what you are said to do. I pray in the name of Jesus that every distraction will be removed from the life of this person. I pray for focus, grace to focus, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray your blessing. I pray miracles. I pray favor. 
I pray increase into the life of this person watching me right now. Lord, let this person receive a touch of the supernatural in her life, in his or her life, in their situation. I thank you, Father. I give you praise and I call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome you to this uh, brand new month. God will do great things for you. This will be a month of big time change for you in the name of Jesus. Positive changes are going to happen in your life. God's going to change things in your favor in the name of Jesus. You do you believe that? Receive it. Things are going to change. It doesn't matter what the situation is. The Bible says God is the one that changes the times and the seasons of our life. But it's going to bring positive changes into your life. Things are going to be different for you from now. And things are going to be better in your life. So get ready for what God is said to do. Amen. As I get into the word of God, as I begin to you know, speak God's word to your heart, teach you God's word, get ready for a miracle. Miracles will happen for you. Yes. And get ready to also receive wisdom from above. You're going to receive a miracle. You're going to receive a touch of the supernatural. If you are sick in your body, I trust God that today you are going to be healed in the name of Jesus. If you have a challenge in your life, I trust God that that challenge would be taken away. If you have a need, I believe God that my God will supply all your needs today according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Wherever you're watching me from, it's not too late for a miracle. Yes, it doesn't matter what the time is, where you are. It's not too late for a miracle. Yes, God showed a miracle for people in their midnight hour. He opened the door. He, 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 he broke their chains. And he did marvelous things for them, uh, Paul and Silas. So God is going to do something for you in the name of Jesus. And if you need, a mir if you need wisdom in your life, get ready to be impacted by wisdom. God is going to give you wisdom that will help you to experience progress. Yes, wisdom is for profitable direction. So God is going to give you wisdom today as you listen uh, to this word. So I'm going to do a teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I began to speak, you know, uh, some weeks back. I began to talk about what will Jesus do if he appears to you? What would Jesus do if he appears to you? And I want to continue that teaching because we are not done yet. Uh, I want to show you what Jesus would do if he appears to you. You know, a whole lot of people will have loved for a celebrity, you know, somebody famous, somebody well-known, renowned, to appear to them, to just come into their life because who shows up into your life or who shows up on your doorstep can determine what happens with your life going forward. Yes, who you meet, who you encounter. You know, that's why people love, you know, don't just desire to meet people so that they can snap pictures, you know. Some people just want to meet important personalities so that they can have pictures with that person. Oh, I met this person and I have pictures and that's the only thing they have to show for it. Don't be that kind of a person. Be a person that wants to have an encounter that would change your life. And the greatest person anybody can desire to meet uh, is Jesus Christ. The greatest person anybody can aspire to encounter is Jesus Christ. Because even kings, why do I say that? Even kings, even kings desire to meet Jesus. You know, before Jesus was crucified, you know, when uh, he was being tried, the Bible says he was sent to Herod. And Herod was the king at that time. And the Bible says Herod had been desiring to meet him. Herod has been desiring to meet Jesus, to see Jesus come into his palace, maybe even work a miracle in his life. And that was one of the, you know, top rulers at that time. But he desired to see Jesus. Even till today, kings, presidents, people in authority, 
they have a desire to meet Jesus. And I want to, and I'm, I want to assure you, I want to tell you that when you meet Jesus, your life will never be the same again. And the good news is that Jesus is coming your way. That's why you are getting this message. That's why you are receiving this word. Jesus is coming your way. Jesus wants to show himself alive to you. You know, after, you know, Jesus was crucified, after he was, uh, after he was, he was crucified, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. But after he rose again, he began to appear to people. He appeared to people to show them to to show them that he is alive. One of the things about living people is that they always show up. So Jesus showed himself alive by many infallible proofs to his disciples. And even now, Jesus is still showing himself alive to people. I, rem I, I remember many years ago, and I think I might, I might have shared this testimony with you uh, in one of the previous brokers. Many years ago, I was an unbeliever. I was not saved. I was a Muslim. And I was curious. I was curious concerning uh, uh, religion and my relationship with God. You know, many people don't have um, a clue about what real life is all about. You know, my curiosity about God and about a relationship with God heightened uh, when I got out of college. When I got out of college, I began to look into the world and I began to have an understanding. I wanted to have a clue about what real life is all about. The question is, do you have a clue about what real life is all about? Do you know where you are? Do you know where you are in life? Do you know where you're going in life? You know, sometimes when I say, do you know where you are? You might look at yourself and say, oh, maybe uh, I'm in the US, I'm in America, or I'm in uh, Asia, I'm in Africa, I'm somewhere. You're looking at the geographical location. That's one way to look at it, but that's not the ult ultimate way to look at it. You know, you need to know your relationship, your positioning as it relates to God. You know, that is very important. That's where you really are in life, your positioning as it relates to God. Where are you in God's radar? Where are you in God's, in God's radar? Are you positioned, you know, to hear from God, to receive from God, to experience God? You know, for instance, the solar system, the solar system, you know, it said that the planet revolved, the earth revolved around the sun. You know, so, but now I'm asking you, do you know where you are? Because God is at the center of everything. If you have not found your place in God, if you don't know where you are in relationship, in relation to where God is positioned, then I want you to pay good attention because this teaching or this preaching, this message will touch your life and impact you for great, for great things. If you don't know where you are, you know, uh, and a whole lot of people don't have a clue of where they are in life. And in fact, some don't even know where they're going. Some don't know where they're going. You know, don't live a clueless life. Don't live a life with a clue. No, don't just live uh, with the spur of the moment. Sometimes you see the way people live as if, you know, they're just living for now. They don't care, you know, what happens to them. They don't take precaution. They're not interested, you know, in anything tangible. They just want to get by, you know. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the wise way to live, but God will give you the wisdom to live in a wise way. So when I got out of college, I began to uh, become curious about God and about relationship with God. And on one of such days, I prayed, I talked to God. I said, God, if you're anywhere and you can hear me, I want to know, I want to know you. I want to know, I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you, you know? And um, I, I, I was a Muslim. I want to find out, you know, where are you? Are you in Islam or are you in Christianity? You know, there are many religions, but I found out those two were similar. And I said, you know, Jesus, I heard you are alive. If you're alive, I want to see you. And I was privileged by God 
God answered my prayer, even as an unbeliever, as someone who has not accepted him, you know, as my Lord and personal Savior at that time, he, 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 he answered my prayer and obliged to me. And he came, Jesus walked into my room. And that night, and my life, you know, changed dramatically. Yes, I tell you, great changes. Oh, since I met Jesus, great changes has happened in my life. Great changes. Many of them I wish I could tell you, and I will tell you as the time goes by. But, you know, my own experience is like, you know, is very, very unimportant right now because the goal of this teaching is for you to have your own experience with Jesus. That's the goal of this teaching. It's not for you to live on my own experience. The goal of this teaching, why God has steered my heart, is to bring you to a place whereby you also will become curious about Jesus, maybe to know him, you know, uh, to, to see him, to experience him and whatever he offers. And I tell you, it's going to be the best thing in your life. And that's what is also on the heart of God. God wants to reveal himself to people. He wants to reveal himself to us. He wants us to have um, an encounter with him. God wants us to have an encounter with him. So I'm going to share with you what Jesus will do if he appears to you, because he wants to appear to you. And, you know, don't be scared. Another thing about it is that don't be scared about Jesus appearing to you. You know, a whole lot of people have spoken to, you know, people at certain times. And I said to them, uh, and especially those who even have a question, those who have a doubt about the validity and the reality of the living Jesus, you know. And I said to them, why don't you ask him to appear to you, at least to prove to you that he loves you, to prove that to you that he's alive. And oftentimes, they said, no, they're, they're always scared. They're always afraid. No, no, I don't want to see him. But you see, God is a good God, you know. He's not going to hurt you when he comes to you. God is going to help you when he comes to you. When God comes to you, it doesn't come to help you. The nature of God is that God abound in goodness. God abound in goodness. God is good all the time. He always does good. In fact, it was said concerning Jesus in his earthly ministry, that he was anointed by God and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So if he appears to you, it's going to do you good. To do you good means to bring good gifts into your life. And if you have sickness in your body, it's going to heal your sickness. If you have questions in your heart, it's going to answer the question in your heart. If you have a need, He's going to supply your need. And I want to pray and I want to prophesy as you are listening to me right now, you are listening to miracle words. These are miracle words that will produce miracles in your life. And these words are not ordinary words. They are words that will also bring wisdom into your life. So like I said to you, uh, the greatest wisdom is to know where you are in life, to, to have an understanding of where you are and where you're going. And that's very, very important. And that's what Jesus is going to do for you when it comes into your life. So I'm going to continue to share with you the encounter of some disciples of Jesus Christ that were written in the scriptures. They were written in the Bible. The Bible, you know, uh, is, the, is the book of God. The Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. The things that were written, they are written for our learning and they are written for our example so that we through them might have comfort and we can have hope in our situation. So as I speak to you from the Bible, I want you to open up your heart and see some things because some things are going to happen in your life and some questions are going to be answered and miracles are going to happen for you. Every time the word of God is preached, God always accompanied the preaching of the word with miracles. So miracles are going to happen in your life. There's going to be a supernatural uh, manifestation or a supernatural occurrence. Something good is going to happen to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear you say something good? Something good is going to happen to you right where you are. Glory to God. So um, in Luke 24, and I'm going to continue from where I stopped. In Luke 24, uh, from verse 28, that's where I stop, and I'm going to continue there. And I will encourage you to watch the previous 
uh, teachings or preachings, uh, the previous messages that I brought you, this is part three of what will Jesus do if he appears to you. You can watch the part one and two. They are all available on my Facebook page, uh, also on uh, YouTube. And that, you know, let me also encourage you to follow me on YouTube. I mean, follow me on, uh, on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's um, if you go to uh, our website, www.hoffan.org. From there, you can click on the YouTube page and follow me, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also follow me on Facebook so that anytime I come on, you can be notified and great things are going to continue to happen in your life. You definitely will be blessed. And let me know what God is saying to you. If you have a question, let me know. If you have a prayer request, you know, just let me know. I'll be able to see you and uh, respond to you as you type your question or have your request. Glory be to God. That means, yeah, my wife has put the, the Facebook, I mean, the, the website there so you can see it. And if you are watching me on YouTube, you could just subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's where, you know, just subscribe so that every time I come on, you can also, also receive a notification. So Luke 24, what would Jesus do if, if he appears to you? Look at this here. The Bible says in Luke 24, verse 28, it was talking about two disciples who Jesus appeared to. The Bible said, it was, he joined himself to them and began to talk to them. And they drew near unto the village whither they went. And he made as though as he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening. And the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. I want to say something very powerful there that will help you. And this is a wisdom key. Every time God appears to us, one of the things about the nature of God is that God hides himself. God hides himself. The Bible says God is the God that hided himself. So you see here, this is the primary characteristics of God and Jesus. Don't forget, Jesus was God in human flesh. Jesus was the express, a visible manifestation of the invisible God. Jesus was God in human flesh. In fact, the Bible called his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Even though he walked in, on earth as, uh, as a man, it was God in human flesh. So, you know, the Bible says he made as though he would have gone further. Every time God wants, comes to you, God doesn't, you know, just... Uh, bridging on you, it will, it will, it will make, when it, God is, comes to you, he will just pass you by. So one of the things you must have in your heart is a readiness to uh, sense the presence of God. You must be able to discern his presence because like Jesus said, he said, I stand at the door and knock and knock. He said, if any man open." I will enter in and sup with him. That was my own encounter. Jesus would stand at the door and knock. When Jesus came to me, he knocked on the door. Jesus won't break the door of your house to gain access. He won't break through the door of your home to gain access. He won't break through the door of your life to gain access. No, he will pass you by and you're going to sense something supernatural. I was asleep, but I heard that knock the first knock and the second knock, and deep down in my spirit, that voice came and said, that is Jesus. And I, I woke out of my sleep. I woke up. Yes, I woke up. And I said, come in, Lord. And he came in. And the same thing, you know, that's what he does. If you look at, through the scripture, there's a, there's a time in, Gen, in Ab, I mean, regarding Abraham, there was a time in Genesis chapter number 18. God passed by Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was seated in the front of his house. You know, he was seated in the, in, 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 you know, in the front of a tent door, Genesis 18 verse 1. And the Lord appeared to him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And he saw them, and he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, my Lord. You see, God didn't just say, Abraham, here am I, I am God. No, he will pass by. He will try to get your attention. That's why this message is very, very important. You need to open up your heart in a readiness to encounter God. 
I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about a relationship, an active relationship with the living God. God will always pass by as if, you know, he's going to pass you by. We saw here, the Bible says, he, he, he made as though he will go further. And to Abraham, he said, he just he lifted up his eyes and there stood three men. And he saw them and he ran to meet them. And he began to pray them, you know, that they would come into his house. You know, he constrained, the Bible says, they constrained him. And Abraham also constrained these three men. That's the nature of God. Every time God wants to bless your life, he will pass by you. Jesus will pass by you. He was with them. He made as if he was going to go further. You know, uh, so Abraham, but listen to this. Your ability to constrain God to stay with you is what will determine the change in your life. You know, some people turn away the guests they don't know. That's why the Bible says we should be careful to entertain strangers because thereby you can entertain angels. That's how God comes. He will come like a stranger, but your reaction to God will determine, you know, his, his next move in your life. Like in the case of Abraham, Abraham appealed to those uh, three men. That was the, the grand appearance of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, back in the New Testament, in the days of Abraham. And Abraham appealed to them, he constrained them, and they finally responded to him. And they even went into his house and he said, look, let me make ready some meal for you to eat. Let me prepare something for you. Let me bring water for you to wash your feet. Let me make food for you. And he also, you know, uh, organized his wife and, you know, mobilized his wife to make some good meal for them. You'll be surprised. While they ate the meal and all that, then they asked him, they said, where is your wife? I'm sure she has cooked some very delicious meal like my wife does. My wife cooks very, very well, you know. <laughs> you know, they said, where is your wife, Sarah? And at that time, Abraham and his wife, they were old, they were well stricken in age, and they were barren, and they didn't have a child. But after the meal, they said, where is your wife, Abraham? He said, she's back in the tent. He said, well, about this time, we're going to return to you again, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a child. Can you imagine? It was just his sensitivity, his ability. You know, don't just limit your life to the natural. There is some things that are supernatural. Abraham's ability to perceive the presence of God and to bring God into his home brought about the greatest desire of his life, his most needed miracle became a reality. Can I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that whatever that desire has been in your life, whatever that big need in your life that God, only God can make happen, I want to prophesy as you are hearing this word, Jesus will come into your life and bring that needed miracle into your life. So open up, stay in a readiness to hear from God, to receive from God, because God always wants to help us. He wants to come into our life. He wants to come into our situation. And he will come into your life. He will come into your situation to help you receive the help of God. In case you are watching me and maybe like Abraham, you have suffered barrenness, maybe barrenness in your body, barrenness in your relation in your finances barrenness of relationship every kind of barrenness i prophesy in the name of jesus christ that that barrenness be destroyed from your life in the name of jesus you will see a miracle you become fruitful your ground will become fruitful your life will become fruitful your mind will become fruitful receive it i'm prophesying to you in the name of jesus christ so open up your mouth you open up your mind. That is how God helps his people. You see, God can't help you if you can't receive him. If you can't receive God, then you cannot be helped. The Bible says he came to his own. He came to his own, but his own received him not. And But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become. If you want God to help you, you got to receive him. You see, no matter what anybody, any package anybody brings to your life, if you don't open the door to receive or to sign up for the package, 
It can be yours. It could just be returned to the sender. So you have to receive it. So you have to receive God the same way. You need to learn to receive God. As you receive God, you're going to see a miracle in your life. Receive the messenger of God. I'm sent by God to you today, not to entertain you, but to empower you and to speak God's word into your life so that you can receive God. So I'm saying that Jesus always has a way. The Bible says he made as though he was going to go further. Every time God appears to people, he's always making as if he's going to go further or he's going to pass them by. There's another man in scripture called Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus, you know, the man was born blind and he was seated by, he was by the wayside begging. And the day of his miracle came. And on the day of his miracle, Jesus passed him by. Jesus saw him. Jesus, the miracle worker, the one that opened blind eyes, the one that caused deaf ears to hear, the one that raised the dead, the Jesus that went about doing good. He saw blind Bartimaeus on his post, at his post, you know, by the side of the road, begging. But Jesus made as though he was going to pass him by. And that's what I'm trying to let you know, that God will always make as though he wants to pass you by. But your ability to constrain him, your ability to receive him, you know, when you, to constrain God means you have to entreat him. When you sense the move of God, when you sense something supernatural, I want you to recognize that God is around. You know, we can't see God, but we can sense it, just like the wind. You can't see the wind, but you can sense when the wind is blowing because you're going to see things around you that will be different from what you have known. For instance, if you begin to see the leaves blowing, blowing, then you're going to know that the wind, you know, is blowing. The wind is blowing. That's how you're going to know that's the wind because you can't see the wind. But when you see the effect of the wind, you're going to know that the wind is blowing. You're going to sense the presence of God. Once God comes your way, like I was asleep, you know, when Jesus came to my door, but even in my sleep, it was a supernatural thing that I could sense that the knock on my door, and it was in the middle of the night. I didn't think it was arm robbers knocking on my door. I couldn't think it was thieves trying to break into my house. I sensed that it was God right in my subconscious. You see, there is something in every one of us. Let me say this very powerful. There is something in ev every one of us that can track the presence of God. God has put a device in our spirit. It's something inside of us that can, that can sense the presence of God. Some people ignore it. But as you are hearing this message, I want to encourage you not to ignore that, you know, sensor in your spirit. That sensor, you know, some people say, oh, it's my imagination. Oh, it's just my thought. It's just my mind that is playing trick on me. No, no, no. You need to sense something that is supernatural because God is a supernatural God. You know, when he appeared to Moses, the Bible says Moses saw uh, a bush burning. And the bush was not consumed. The bush was burning, but it was not consumed. So Moses knew that that was a supernatural, you know, uh, burning of the bush. So he looked further. And that's when he heard the voice of God called him and said, Moses, Moses. And he responded. So that's how God appears to people. He will appear as if, it, you know, it was going to pass you by. The Bible says they constrain him. Verse Luke 24, verse 29. So what I'm saying to you is that when Jesus comes by you, he comes through, he can come, you know, in person. He can send his angel. He can send a messenger. Somehow, you have to be open to sense that this is a miracle moment. In fact, your miracle will begin when you are able to sense the presence of God. Your miracle begins when you are able to sense the presence of God. You see, another person was Jacob. Jacob you know, was another person in, in scriptures who encountered God. And Jacob was asleep. The Bible says he was asleep. And he woke up in the morning and he had a dream. And he saw angels ascending and descending. And he didn't take his dream for nothing. The Bible says when he woke up, he said, oh, this is nothing else but the gate of heaven. 
he sensed that it was the gate of heaven because that dream was supernatural. It was God, you know, coming into his life and God, you know, speaking to him. And right there, Jacob took an oil, he anointed that place, you know, as the gate of God. And he said, no, I have to build a tabernacle here. I have to build a house of God here because I am at the gate of heaven. How did he know? He was open to the supernatural. He was open to what God has for him. I want you to open up your heart for what God has for you. God has something in store for you. God wants to appear in your life. God wants to do something in your life, but have a readiness to receive. Have a readiness you know, to, to constrain God, to, to bring him in. Don't discount God. You see, your life will go further. Your life will become better. Your life will become more fulfilling. Your life will become enriched when God comes into your life. Yeah, God is the biggest addition into your life. In fact, I would say the, multi the biggest multiplication factor into our life. When God comes into your life, your life will become, it will be upgraded, you know, at a level you've never known. But look at it here. So I'm saying, learn to, they constrain him. He made as though it was going to move, was going to go further. Luke 24, verse 29. I'm talking to you about what Jesus would do when he appears to you. He will pass you by. He will pass you by. Things will happen in your life that God is showing you. He's just showing that, look, I'm passing by. I'm passing by. What do you do? You know, most people can, you know, when there are things that people can't let by. For instance, now, most men, when they see a beautiful lady pass by, their eyes will look. They look. They're going to look at the lady. They're going to look at things they, when, when they see a beautiful lady passing by. They don't just pretend as it. No, they're going to look, you know, they look. There's a commercial I saw uh, sometimes ago, you know, they, 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 want, they were doing, uh, what would I call it now? They were just doing um, a, a test on men, how men will behave. So, you know, uh, they, they put a lady with cubs to pass by, you know, walking like, you know, like a cat passing by. And they were checking on the men. As the lady was walking on the street, almost all the men, in fact, I, I can't remember if there was one. It was like 100% of the men that look, may God forgive men. May God forgive men, you know. 100% of the men that, 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 that drove past, you know, on that, uh, uh, what will I call it now, reality show, you know, they turned to look at that girl. 100%, every one of them, you know, different ones, they came in different cars, you know, at different times. The moment they see somebody coming, they, they put the camera on the guy. He's driving, but he will look. He's driving, he will look. So if you can, if you can, if you can notice a beautiful girl because you see some shapes and some bodies and some curves pass you by, then that means you have ability to discern God. Blind Bartimaeus, Blind Bartimaeus was blind, but yet when Jesus passed by, he was able to perceive that that was Jesus. In fact, when he heard the movement, he said, what is happening? They said, that is Jesus. He said, that is my miracle moment. So you can always know when God is passing by. And he began to cry out. He constrained Jesus. He wouldn't let Jesus pass by. So when God passes you by, don't let him go. Don't let him go. Hold him down because there's a miracle with your name on it. When God comes your way, oh, blessings have come into your life. You know, when Jesus comes into your, comes by your way, your change has come. Your transformation has begun. You will never be the same again. Then let me go ahead. Look at it here. Very powerful. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Let me know where you're watching from, let me know how this word is blessing you. You know, God has a miracle with your name. Thank you for everyone watching. I can see you. God bless you. Share this if you have not shared this yet. Luke 24, verse number 29. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. That is it. That is very powerful. He went in to tarry with them. Listen to this. Jesus always longs to abide with us. Yeah, he wants to tarry with you. He wants to, he wants to be with you. He, he wants to stay with you. He wants to be your companion. God loves people. 
God loves you and God wants to be with you. You know, he said, if, if any man love me, he said, if any man love me, any man open unto me, I will enter in and sup with him. He also says, if any man love me, it will be love of my father and we will manifest ourselves to him. So God wants to manifest himself to you. God loves you. He wants to come into your life. He wants to abide with you. You don't have to be alone. You know, it, God with you is a majority with you. He said he went in and abide with them to stay with them. Can you imagine when God comes into your heart, when God comes into your life, you know, that means your life is going to be empowered. When God lives in your house, your beer will become God's beer. <laughs> you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, I thank God I don't struggle to pay my bills because God lives with me. So my bill is God's bill. A whole lot of people are wondering, how can I get my bills met and my bills paid? Just get God to live with you and he will begin to pay your bills. He will meet your need. You know, you have so much to gain, so much to profit when God comes into your life, you know, and he will take care of you. He will take care of you. Your health, your health will become his concern because he's the great physician. If, he's in, if he comes to abide with you, he will heal your body. He will make your bed in sickness. That means you will not be sick another day in your life. Glory to God. So, he went into tarry with them. Verse 30. Look at something very powerful here. It came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and broke it and gave it to them. Verse 31. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. Oh my God. I want to talk to you about this. Their eyes were opened. The question is, are your eyes opened yet? Have your eyes been opened? You see, eyes that look are many, but eyes that see are few. I will say that again. Eyes that look are many, but eyes that see are few. One of the things that Jesus will do when he comes into our life, when he appears to us, is to open our eyes. I asked you, I, I, I asked a question at the beginning of this broadcast. I said, do you have a clue about the real life? Do you have a clue about real life? Do you know where you are? Do you know where you are going? Until your eyes is opened, you don't have a clue about real life. Yeah. You see, your, your, your physical eyes are not the eyes that actually see. I want to, let me read the scripture here. Glory to God. I'm going to show you something here and allow me to teach. Look at Mark chapter 4. I want to read something here. Jesus said something very powerful to his disciples in Mark chapter 4. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 11. You know, he gave a parable. You know, he gave a parable and they could not understand the parable. So they came to ask him the meaning of the parable. You know, life is like a parable. Life is a parable. But our ability to understand the parable of life is what would, that is where our, 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 uh, our living begins. When you are able to understand the parable of life, you see, there are a lot of people who are just running the rat race of life. Yeah, I can tell you that a whole lot of people are running the rat, rat rates of life. They are pursuing things. They are pursuing material things, physical things, and they don't even understand what real life is. What real life is. You know, uh, a man of God, man of God, uh, Lester Sumrall, you know, gave his, you know, gave his, um, had a vision many years ago. And he had a vision, you know, in that vision, he saw people, you know, racing, 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 racing on a highway, and they were racing, and the race was, you know, much. They were all going in one direction, but he was caught up by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God took him above the highway, above, you know, the earth level, and took him above. So he saw the race of men. They were running, running, but something really, you know, uh, shook him that changed the course of his life, and I believe that that was when his own eyes opened, you know, why were they running to? He saw that they were running, and at the edge of the highway, there was a great gulf of people. 
I mean, a great gulf of fire, you know, you know, intense fire burning, a great gulf of fire was burning, you know, and all the people that were running, they were running when they get into the edge of that highway, they fell into the fire. And while some of them get to the edge, they were trying to stop, but the push from behind of the people coming from that highway kept pushing them in, kept pushing them in. And God told him that is what a whole lot of people are doing. They are running the race of, they are running the race of life, but they are not running with eternity in view. They want, they want, because their eyes are not open. You know, life is bigger than the present life we currently live. You see, our current life is to prepare us for eternal life. And until our eyes are open, we don't know the difference between, uh, we, we, we just be living this life here, not paying attention to eternal life. But the good news is that God wants to give us abundant life here and also seek, help us to secure our eternal life in destiny, I mean, in, in future, you know? So that's why our eyes need to be open. You know, some of us, all we are, some, some, some of us, all we are thinking about is all we can eat, what we can drink, what we can wear. But you're gonna find out that, that there's nothing wrong with that. But life is bigger than that. Life had until you are able to see the big picture, and that's what Jesus wants to do. When you, when your eyes are open to see the big picture, your life will change. So Jesus began to give them his. Otherwise, life would be like a parable to a person. Jesus gave a testimony here. The Bible says, "Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but those which are without, all these things are done in parable." So people live a life of parable their life doesn't they don't really have the read the clue of the real life then he says something in verse 12 mark chapter 4 verse 12 he said that seeing they may see and not perceive so that's why i said there are people who are seeing things but their perception they, are, they don't perceive they don't understand what is going on and hearing they may hear and not understand least at any time they should be converted. You see, when you see the real, when your eyes are open, there's going to be a conversion in your life. There's going to be a transformation. There's going to be a change. He said that they should be converted and their sins be forgiven them. Their sins, they'll be converted and their sins will be forgiven them. You see, the most important thing anybody can desire in life or can experience in life. Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you the most important thing that can happen to you in your life. Take it from me. It's for you to receive the forgiveness of your sins. That's the most important thing that can happen to you in your life. I'm sure you might think when you buy a car, that's very important thing. When you build a house or like skyscrapers, you know, behind me, you might think that's the most important thing. When you buy your uh, first aircraft, and I'm praying that you're going to have all those things and God will make it happen for you, you will think that's the most important thing. But no, the, the salvation of your soul is the most important thing that can happen to you. The salvation of your soul. And your soul cannot be saved until your eyes are open. Yes, you know, God wants to open your eyes so that you can see the salvation of your soul as the most important thing. Jesus said that, that you may be converted and that your sins should be forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven by, by, because Jesus paid the price. But you need to receive the forgiveness of your sin. You need to receive the forgiveness of your sin. That's the most important thing. In fact, the Bible says, what shall it profit a person if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? So the question is, if you, if you have not actually made a decision about the salvation of your soul, your eyes is not open yet. That's why you will need to be born again. 
to be born again. You know, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So your salvation, your eyes become open when you become a child of God. And God, Jesus wants to open your eye because you see, what is important, you know, when, when, when a person is blind, listen to this, when a person is blind, the first, I mean, one of the indication of blindness is groping in the dark. A person will be groping in the dark. You know, he'll be hitting things. He'll be going, you'll be making movement, but you'll be making a retarded, you know, uh, on linear movement. You'll be moving, but you are not going forward. You are not doing well, but God wants us to do it. So that's why the Bible says their eyes were open and they knew him. Now, this is very important. Let me say this now. When your eyes open, the, the proof that your eyes is open is that you will know God. You will know God. You will know God for who he is. Once you know God, you will be changed. You become a changed person. Once your eyes is open to know God, your priorities will change. Your passions will change. You'll be converted. Your pursuit of life will change. Once you know God, you know, life will be different for you once you know him. And, you know, there is nothing that beats knowing God. Nothing. Nothing that beats knowing God. You know, there are people who are, who are also, I mean, who, 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 are, um, who are Christians who don't know God. Yeah, there are people who are religious who don't know God. There are many religious people in the days of Jesus in his earthly ministry. There were the Sadducees, there were the Pharisees. They, they were religious people. They were doing things, religious stuff, but they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know God. In fact, uh, Paul, Saul, who became Paul the Apostle, was one of them. So even if you're a Christian, your greatest goal is not just to have a title, is to know God, you know, and it's a prayer you should be praying. One, that's the, in fact, don't pray for a house. <laughs> don't pray for a car. Pray to know God. That is the greatest prayer of your life. That is the greatest prayer. I, I mean, I would recommend for anybody to pray. You know, uh, Apostle Paul, that was his prayer. He said, he, he prayed in Philippians 3.10. His major prayer is that I may know him that I may know him. The question is, do you know Jesus? You know, you, just, you can be walking with him and not know him. Yes, you can be walking with him and not know him. He said they were walking with him, but they didn't know he was the one. And they, they were not converted. There was nothing different. If your life is not different, if your life is not centered around God, if, you know, because when you know God, let me say something here again. When you know God, when you know God, your life will have a new meaning. Once you know God, your life will be centered around him. Your ultimate goal will be to please him. In fact, Apostle Paul, one time, he said, when he came to know Jesus, he said, for me to live is Christ. How would you know? Maybe, let me say it this way. How would you know that you know God? It's just simple. This is wisdom key right now. The way for you to know that you know God is to ask yourself, what are you living for? So simple. What are you living for? Because if you know God, there is nothing else you will want to live for than to live for God. He said, for me to live is Christ. Everybody that encountered God, and this is why I said that is wisdom key. Everybody that knew Jesus, that encountered Jesus, the moment they met him, nothing meant anything to them anymore. Yes. Nothing meant anything to them anymore. It's not that they didn't have those things anymore, but those things didn't have them no more. You know, and I could give you a series of people. Peter, for instance, Peter was a fisherman. He was toiling to become a successful fish magnet, to become, you know, uh, a great successful fish, uh, fish, fish magnet, to, to, to have, you know, uh, his fishery, you know, industry and whatever he wanted to do. But a time came when Jesus came into his life and Jesus brought miracle into his life from when his business was failing. He had overnight breakthrough, abundance. His business 
turned around overnight. And I'm praying a turnaround will come into your business. A turnaround will come into your career. A turnaround will come into your life. A turnaround will come into whatever you do. God does not deprive us of things. God give us things. So God filled his boat and he beckoned on his partners and God filled all their boats. But when Peter came out and saw Jesus, he fell down on his knees and said to Jesus, I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man. Forgive me my sin. And Jesus forgave his sin. Amazingly, the Bible says, Peter forsook all and followed him. He forsook all and followed him. Why? Because he has found the source of every good thing in life. Jesus is the source of every good thing in life. When your eyes open, nothing else will mean much to you like following Jesus. And I'm praying that God will open your eyes. Yeah, because you see, in a, uh, one of the things you see in the body of Christ today among Christians, when, you know, and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me on this, and I'm saying it to you, most people don't want to know God. They just want to get things. Most people, even in the church, our goal is not to know God. Our goal is to get things. But I'm praying that your eyes will open, that you will move from trying to get things to wanting to know God more. Yeah, Apostle Paul was praying that I may know him, that I may know him. You know, another person who got to know Jesus was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a very rich man. He was, a, a, in fact, he was, a, he was a, you know, a rich man, a prudent rich man, and also as the, you know, tradition with rich people, all manner of, you know, things went into his business. He was a shady business person. But the day Jesus came into his heart, into his life, into his home. The moment he met Jesus, guess what? He began to say to Jesus, I'm willing to give out my money. I want to make restitution. If I've, if I've robbed anybody, anything, I'm going to give it back to them. I just, I just want you. I just want you. Lord, I just want you. Do you want Jesus that much? That's my prayer for you today, that you will be converted that you will come to the place whereby what you want is not things but him. Oh, I will say that again. What you want is not things but him. And the good news is that once you find him, he doesn't deprive us of things. Oh, yes, he doesn't deprive us of things. The Bible says, seek him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But don't be seeking those things. Pray that your eyes will be opened that you may know him. Yeah, uh, my prayer also is I want to know him more. I want to know him more. I want to know him more. Oh, my time is fast spent again. Uh, I don't want to go too much. I mean, to, to stay more than one hour. I mean, we could have a revival. If you, you know, we could have a revival. If this word is blessing you, let me know how this word is blessing you. We could have a revival, but you know, I'm going to continue. I'm, I'm not going to stop because God wants to meet with you, see, but I'm just speaking to you that the greatest thing in your life is that your eyes be open. Why don't you pray today that, Lord, open my eyes. Job said, Job prayed this prayer. Most people in scripture have prayed this prayer. Most powerful people in scripture pray this prayer. Job said, that which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Yeah, I want to know you, that my eyes might be open. When your eyes is open to see Jesus, once your eyes is open, the first thing, when you see Jesus, your eyes is open. And once you see him, you're going to know him. And once you know him, you're going to want him. Yeah, you're going to want him more. You're going to want him more than anything else in your life. And if you want him, you're going to want people to want him. You're going to want people to want him. Glory be to God. You know, and there are many people out there that don't know Jesus yet. Maybe you are even watching me today and you have not known Jesus, but he wants to open your eyes today. And I believe that this word is opening your eyes. Maybe you want to, be, you, you want to become a child of God, or maybe you are, you are becoming curious. Maybe before, this is the first time you are hearing a, a message like this about Jesus. You never really paid attention to it. I will encourage you to, to dig deep, to seek more, to seek more about God. Or maybe you have been someone who have been convinced, but you know, you've been convicted, but you are not convinced. But now you think this is the time for me to go all out. I have been 
at the borderline for too long. But today, I sense in my spirit that God is speaking to me. I sense that God is passing me by. Oh, I sense that you are a man of God, Bishop O. Olafe. You are a man of God sent to me. And today, I want to give my heart to the Lord. I want to become a child of God. I have been running this rat race. I have been chasing shadows. But now, I want to live for God. I want to become born again. I want to be a child of God. I want to be different. I want to, I want to experience God in my life. If that is you, right where you are, I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. And if, if that is your desire you want to become a child of God or maybe you have been you know you have been born again but you drew back you have become religious you know but now you want that relationship with Jesus again I want to pray for you I want to pray with you I, 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 if that is your desire I want you to say this prayer with me and I want you to mean it in your heart say Lord Jesus today I open up my heart to you. I thank you for your love. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for opening my eyes. Thank you for helping me today. I know I'm a sinner and I confess my sins and I receive your forgiveness. I ask that you forgive me. I believe you died for me and you rose again on the third day for my justification. So today I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, O oh God. I make a commitment to serve you, to live for you. Come into my heart. Thank you. Give me a new beginning. I receive my salvation right now. I receive my conversion right now in the name of Jesus. If you are saying that prayer, or maybe you have been born again, say, I rededicate my life to you from today. I want to live for you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for bringing me your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Oh, what a blessing. Congratulations, if you said that prayer with me, I rejoice with you, my, my brother, I rejoice with you, my sister, congratulations. I want, to pray, I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you right now. The decision you have made today is the best decision you ever made in your life. Yeah, now your life is going to be different. Yeah, you're going to have abundant life here on earth, an eternal life in heaven. Yeah, your mansion is secured in heaven in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for this child of yours who has said this prayer today. I pray in the name of Jesus that your grace that saved this one, let that same grace keep this one. I command Satan's end broken over your life in the name of Jesus. I command Satan's tracking in your life destroy. I decree a new beginning for you in the name of Jesus. Grace to live for God. Grace to know Jesus more intimately, passionately, receive right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. What a blessing. What a joy. Congratulations one more time. Congratulations. I rejoice with you. If you said that prayer with me, I want you to please right now, you know, uh, maybe after the broker, send me uh, a text message, you know, wherever you are, you can add a text message on email. If you want to send me a text message, text the word love, that's L-O-V-E, to this number, 678-940-6080. One more time, the number is uh, 678-940-6080. Don't call, just text the word love to that number. I'll be able to send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you, and I will help you in your work with God and in your growth in the things of God. And if you want to, if you want to email me, just go to our website. The website is www hoffan.org that's h o f f a n.org that's www.hoffan.org if you look at the top or bottom of this broadcast you're going to see that number to text love to or this uh the website or if you want to inbox me on facebook please do that and i'll be able to uh, get in touch with you in the name of jesus if you're in the usa you're in the atlanta metro area I want you to let me know when you send me a text so that you know I can you know welcome you to be part of our services in our uh, in our churches and God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Yes, before I go today, I want to I want to I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray a miracle into your life in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, stretch your hand if you are sick in your body. I believe in my spirit that God wants to heal you right now. God wants to heal you right now. Oh yes, I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me, is healing eye problems, eye problems, 
Yes, if you have pain in your eyes or itchy eyes or any kind of blindness, I see God healing your eyes right now. If you touch your eye, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to that eye. Touch your eye. Touch your eye and put the other hand on, the, on your screen or whatever it is. I speak healing to that eye right now. I command the itch to go. I command the pain to go. I command the eyesight restored. Be open. Eyes open. Eyes open. Eyes open in the name of Jesus. Eyes open. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God is not just opening your spiritual eyes. He's opening your physical eyes. Begin to see right now. Begin to see. Begin to see. Yeah, you can see me. You couldn't see before, and you can see me. Let me know you can see. Yes, as God is opening your eyes, let me know you can see. In the name of Jesus, God is opening your eyes. Let me know. You can inbox me right now. Let me know what God is doing in your life. I want to pray for you. Miracles in your body. Somebody, I want to pray against that spirit of depression, that heaviness. You see, you, you, you are depressed. Oh, because you, your focus was wrongly uh, placed. You are looking at things rather than looking at God. Oh, yeah, but God has opened your eyes right now. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things which he has, but whom he has. So your life is dependent on Jesus. See Jesus more. As you see Jesus more, as you love him more, he will supply your needs. So I speak and I cause that spirit of heaviness to go. Go from your life. That heaviness, depart now in the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit of heaviness right now. And I speak healing to you. Receive healing right now. That depression is gone from you. If you are sick in your body, put your hand on your head. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I speak healing for you. Receive healing in your body. I speak healing to your head, to your mind. I cause that spirit of migraine to go in the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Yeah, God is telling me now. There is somebody you have an eardrum problem that is causing persistent headache for you. It's a eardrum problem. I think it's the left ear, uh, either the left or the right. I don't know right now, but even both ears. It's causing persistent headache. God is healing your eardrum right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing, healing, healing to your ears. In the, I command that pain to subside. I command it to go, go, pain, go in the name of Jesus. Be gone in Jesus mighty name. God is working miracles. Whatever your miracle is, just claim it now. Say, Father, I receive my healing. I might not have mentioned yours. Yeah, that person that has not been able to conceive to have a child, receive fruitfulness right now. Receive fruitfulness. Oh, God is working a whole lot of miracles. Conceive from this moment. God has entered into your house. Nine months from today, in the name of Jesus, you are carrying your miracle child in your hand. Nine months from today, in the name of Jesus, if I be a man of God, Oh, you are carrying your miracle child. Let me know what God has done in your life. That miracle is yours in Jesus' mighty name. Glory be to God. Before I go, before I sign out, I'm waiting to see if you, if you let me know what God, let me hear your testimony. You can share your testimony. Let me know what God is doing. Let me know if you are healed in your body, if you are receiving your miracle. Don't just keep it. Share it so that people can be blessed by it. You can inbox me or you can type it right now or you can send me an email or you can text your testimony to 678-940-6080. Let us know what God is doing in your life. Before I go, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, sow into our ministry, to give your financial offering. You know, that's one way by which God blesses his people. The word of God says, if we have ministered to you spiritual things, we ought to reap your carnal things. That's how God blesses you. When you give to the work of God, then God will multiply the seed that you sow. So I want you to give an offering today to sow a seed faith. If this word has been a blessing, you help us to continue to do what God has called us to do. Wherever you are on the surface of the earth, the, the platform we have is an acceptable platform. If you go to our website, the website once again is www.hoffan.org. Click the give button and plant your financial seed and watch God multiply the seed sown back to you in the name of Jesus. When you sow bountifully, God will multiply bountifully to you. If you want to give cash up by cash up, you know, or whatever form, if you go to the website, you can find it. But if you look at the top 
or bottom of this broadcast, you're going to see a, a number for the cash app. Just, you know, use that number and give your offering today. I pray for every giving, for every giving. Let there be a multiplication. Release your faith today. Faith is action. Release your faith and claim a miracle. Tie your faith around a seed for big time change, for miracles in your life. This is faith talk and miracle moment. Release your faith. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible. Release your faith for possibilities as you sow your seed, and God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. I, I thank you so much, my wife, for being a part of this, for itemizing all this uh, wonderful uh, point, and for every one of you that made a comment, God bless you. Thank you for watching me. I broadcast every Tuesday, uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern and 8.30 p.m. GMT. Plan to join me again uh, next Tuesday with more Fit Talk. We're going to continue this powerful word. Let me know how this word is blessing you. If you're watching me on Facebook, leave a comment. I want you to subscribe to my Facebook page. And I also want you to like my, I mean, my Facebook page and subscribe to my YouTube page. If you're watching me on YouTube, subscribe and let, you know, let subscribe to my YouTube, YouTube page so that anytime I come on, you can have this message uh, sent to you. Also, share this message so that many more people can, can be a part of it. If you have not shared it yet, share it now. Help somebody to receive this miracle word. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until I come your way again next time, this is Bishop O. Olaofer with Faith Talk and Miracle Moment, reminding you that Jesus loves you. Jesus is Lord, and I love you too. Shalom. Bye now.